The following story is titled Marley and Me. And it has nothing to do with the book of the same name. This is uh, a different Marley. It's not a dog. It's in relation to Bob Marley and in relation to my first time, we'll say, hanging out with Bob. First time I tried to hang out with him. Um, there's a show on television called How I Met Your Mother, and they say, uh, they, they call the act Eating a Sandwich. So we're going to go with Eating a Sandwich and Hanging with Bob. I'll use those interchangeably. So this is a story that took place in, I think it was 2004. We're going to go with that, and we're also just going to preface all of this by saying this is completely from memory. This is me recalling the events that occurred that night. I've discussed them with friends over the years, and I've gathered all the details, but again, it's a little hazy, and possibly for all intents and purposes, legal purposes and whatnot, we're just going to say this is a, uh, a work of fiction if you will. Um, but yeah, this is my memory. So sort of fiction. So it was back in 2004. I was 16 or 17. Either way, we were old enough to drive. Um, my friend, we're going to call him Goodfellow. That'll, that'll be his nickname for the story. He was the driver that night. Um, normal night, you know, it was just after dinner time. He picked up myself and our other friend. We'll call him J.W. So me, good fellow, and J.W. riding around, and he's got it's an old piece of a car. I mean, it's I I'll have to ask him what it was. I think it was like an Oldsmobile, but it had four doors, pretty beat up. He'd been uh, or he continued to drive it for the next couple of years. It's kind of a piece, but you know, it got the job done. It was the it was a boat of a car, so I'm sure it was very safe for any sort of fender bender. It was so wide, it would protect him. Um, many a days were spent rolling around to instrumental rap music, freestyling in that car. Um, unfortunately, I, I can't admit that that happened a lot. Uh, this night it may have included some freestyle as well. So, uh, anyways, good fellow JW and I, we're riding around in the car, um, and we're just heading over to our friend's house, and the guys are just hanging out, they're just playing cards, we're just going to play a little bit of poker this night. We get over there, normal night, um, I'm doing well at the card game, things are going great, we start talking, and I'd been wanting to try eating a sandwich, uh, hanging out with Bob. Mr. Marley and me for some time now. You know, I was I was one of the few guys in the group that hadn't done it yet. So they, they were like, "Hey, let's you know, let's make that happen tonight." Um, my friend Goodfellow, he actually had some on him, um, some of the sandwich, sandwich accoutrement, if you will. Um, the elements of the sandwich were there. You know, we could make it happen. We weren't, we couldn't make it happen in the basement, in my friend's basement, obviously. Uh, his parents were home. It's kind of a little bit on the iffy side. So um, he said, hey, you know, let's take a break from the poker game. Let's go. I've got to meet my other friend. Uh, he's at this house party right now down uh, by the Potomac River. It's a big old house. They're having like a backyard party, that sort of deal. i got to drop some off and just say what's up to him. But then on the way back, you know, we can just uh, roll around the Oldsmobile uh, the big boat, and um, you know, just fill it up with sandwich and uh, hang out with Marley there. So I was like, all right, well, yeah, let's do it. But, you know, we were just hanging out in the basement, didn't really have any big plans. So I was like, hey, you know, this is as good a night as any to uh, to eat that sandwich. So we we get to this house party. You know, it's about twenty minutes away. Um, it's it's packed. I know some people there. It was weird. There was parents who were home, but they were supervising. And remember, that we were all in high school. Um, and Lord knows what was going on still. It didn't even matter. Um, but, it, hey, we were just there to say what's up, drop some some sandwich elements off, uh, whatever whatever my friend had to do. So I was just hanging out, waiting around for him. Um, so he goes off into the party, into the crowd. Gets kind of lost. Um, I'm just doing my own thing. Hanging out with mother, mother boy J.W. 
and we were in the backyard. Um, also, like to mention, had a great shirt on. It was an excellent button-up shirt. New shirt. Um, I, you know, I thought it looked pretty good. I thought I was dressed well, dressed to impress, if you will. And for the purposes of the story, I will. And we're just hanging out in the backyard, you know, mingling. We know a couple people there. I find out um, our other friend is actually in the basement of the house. <clears throat> we want to go down and say what's up. And JW and I, we go down the stairs. The stairs are outside. This is an outdoor, or in the backyard, outdoor staircase leading to the basement. So basement entry, you got to go into the ground, kind of. But it's open. Um, there's like a railing, and the stairs are just outdoors. So we go down there. People are hanging out. They're dancing. They're listening to music, doing whatever. And go down there, say what's up. Um, then I hear our other friend Goodfellow. He's like ready to leave. And we're ready to get out of there. we got to drive back towards where we live. And then we got to eat the sandwich and hang out with Bob for a little bit and just see what happens. Um, so it's like, okay, it's time to leave. JW starts off ahead of me up the stairs. Um, remember, these are the outdoor stairs in the basement. So he's walking up. He gets he gets up there. I get caught up right at the door, talking to someone. I, you know, just say a couple more words, say what's up. Like, but hey, I gotta run. I'm with uh, JW and Goodfellow. We gotta head out. Though. Great to see you. So I start up the stairs. Um, start up the stairs with my great looking shirt. And all of a sudden, I see out of the corner of my eye, there's, there's this bucket. It, this bucket is just falling down off the railing towards me. Now, it was just sitting at the top of the stairs, teetering on the ledge. I don't know what's in this bucket, but I see it's coming at me. I try, I try to get out of the way, obviously, like any, any rational person would. Especially when you see that there's some sort of liquid in it and it's coming at you. And I, I don't get out of the way. I don't fully get out of the way. Liquid is everywhere. The liquid reeks. It stinks so bad. It was it was disgusting. It was chunky. It was all over me. I got all over my new shirt. It smelled horrible. And I came to the conclusion it had to be throw up. It was puke. I mean, it obviously was. Someone was doing a little bit of drinking or something and just got sick. And they saw this bucket, and rather than throwing it up in the bushes, they threw it up in this bucket. And the bucket ended up on me. So I get to the top of the stairs, I'm pissed. All I wanted to do is get out of here. I was just trying to hang out tonight with my friends, eat a sandwich, and that's it. Just have a good time. Just chill, low-key with my friends. But no, instead, I'm covered in puke. It's all over my new shirt. My new shirt is ruined. Everyone is looking at me. I stink. So I ripped the shirt off, and I figure someone had to have knocked the bucket down onto me. So I get pissed, and I start yelling. I start yelling, like, who, who, who knocked that bucket down off the railing? It spilled all over me. It ruined my shirt. It ruined my shirt. So I'm just standing there in the middle of this crowd screaming. Rip the shirt off. Throw it on the ground. I don't even want it anymore. It's, it's so disgusting. I didn't have any undershirt or anything on underneath so i'm just standing there with no shirt luckily it's the middle of summer but i you know i'm just i'm in like my shorts and flip-flops <clears throat> excuse me and i'm just shirtless and i see my horrible stinky shirt just on the ground and i even like wiped up a little bit of the puke that was still on me uh, with the shirt I kind of mop mop mopped up the mess the rest of the mess with it and i just left the shirt there so Goodfellow and JW were like, hey, let's get out of here before things get too crazy. Don't want anything weird to go down. Um, let's just get in the car, eat a sandwich, get home. So I'm like, okay, that's, that's, that's fine with me. Let's do that. We get in the car, and now we're in a pretty, uh, pretty tight quarters um, in this car. Yeah, it's a boat, but it's, there's just three... Three dudes sitting in the car, I'm in there, I smell like puke, and they just can't stand it. It's disgusting. We got the windows down, it is awful. It was a terrible 20 minute drive back towards our neighborhood. 
But once we got there, we were like, all right, let's let's eat up this sandwich, get it going, close the windows, and maybe we'll stink it out with the sandwich smell. And at the same time, we'll just, you know, we'll keep eating the sandwich so that you start feeling better. Remember, this is the first time I'm eating a sandwich. So I don't even know. They're, they're saying we're going to maybe have to eat it for a while um, to really get the full effect of the sandwich. So we start to. And, you know, the things are great. And, you know, I'm feeling good. We're all laughing, having a good time, playing, playing a little, little music, talking. But the smell just won't go away. It still stinks. It stinks the high heavens in there. And they just they just can't stand it. I can't stand it. So we finish eating the sandwich, put the windows down, air it out for a while, and I still stink. But that's all right. You know, we figured, hey, let's go back to our friend's place. Everyone's still there from when we were playing cards. Let's hang out. Maybe I can wash up in the uh, bathroom a little bit. Get smelling good again. So that's the point. We pull up. We park in the um, the cul-de-sac. Get out of the boat. And then I realize, guys, I, I don't have a shirt on. Um, our, fr- our friend's parents are home. You know, I kind of want to be able to have a shirt on my back. They saw me earlier with a shirt. We just left. Now we're at, coming back, acting all funny. And I'm shirtless. What are we going to do about this? So my friend Goodfellow pops a trunk of the boat. And what, what would you know? He's got a ton of just clothes. And... I, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, great. I'm going to find a shirt in here. But all of the clothes are disgusting. They're all from, like, leftover lacrosse practice. God knows what, like, how long they've been in there. It's just, they're terrible. I find the least disgusting shirt, which is still old and stained and kind of stinks to begin with, but it doesn't smell as bad as meat at this point. So anything is an improvement. It's good enough. I get on the shirt, and we start to walk towards the front door, but then we're like, hey, should we just walk around the back? Because there's back entrance, and that's where the guys are. And we just ate the sandwich, so we're kind of paranoid um, about people just, like, seeing us and talking to us who we don't know too well, or, like, adults. Um, so we're like, all right, maybe let's, let's just walk around the back. So we start to, but... As we start to, we realize our friend's dad is standing in the doorway, on the front stoop, looking at us. And we don't know how long he's been there. I'm pretty sure it looked like he'd been there for at least long enough to see that we were acting pretty goofy, that I was putting on this disgusting shirt and just had been wandering around trying to air myself out. So he probably got to be wondering what the hell is going on. So then at that point, we're like, all right, I guess I guess we're not going around the back because he's right there. We kind of have to address him at this point. Uh, that would just be weird to ignore him, and he would probably call us out. So we're like, all right, let's, let's just go in the front door. We say hello to him. He doesn't really move at all. We kind of have to meander around him, like slide, navigate in between the door frame and him, and he's just sort of eyeing us down as we walk in. Clearly knowing that something, something is up that we got for a reason, and at the very least, he smelled me. He was just like, "That you need to leave." I'm sure that's what he was thinking, but he let us in. We get down to the basement. The guys are still playing cards. They started playing another game, so I'm I'm just like, "All right, let's like jump into this." I'm feeling good. I'm feeling loose. Um, the sandwich was good, um, and I'm trying to. Trying to improve my night since the uh, bucket of throw out fell on me. So I'll take anything to get that done. Um, so we sit down. We, we get the card game going again. No one can stand me. It doesn't, it doesn't take very long to like, dude, go to the bathroom, wash up. So I go in. I, I ask my friend if I can take a shower, but he thinks that might be a little too weird to go upstairs shower it's the middle of the evening his parents are probably like what are you doing down there um so i'm just like all right that's fine like that's totally understandable but i know i just think i know you guys can't stand me i can barely stand myself um i'm i'm just gonna go home i was walking distance to my house it's just down the hill 
I'm just going to go home, I'm going to shower, I'm going to hang out in my room for a little bit, I'm going to go to bed. Right? I'm, you know, I'm feeling, feeling good enough to where I just want to lay down and just, just, just be not stinky. So I go home. I said, I walk on. Um, I, I get in. Luckily, my parents aren't aren't home yet, so they're not there to smell me, um, or just that I don't have to interact with them right now. Because again, first time sandwich. Uh, not really sure how I'm acting. I think I'm acting pretty normal, but who knows? Um, I had nothing to judge that on. Like I had no no previous experience or no other perspective but my own at that point. So I get in, I, I go immediately into the shower, take a shower. My parents come home, I actually end up talking to them for a little bit, and then I just go to bed. Um, so that was the end of the night. Now, it, it, you know, it had its ups and downs. Uh, the puke, obviously the huge down. Um, being intimidated by my friend's dad, the down. Um, smelling up every place that I went, pretty big downer. But overall, uh, the first time eating the sandwich, it was, it was good. You know, it felt good. But let's say a month or two goes by. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how long. And my friend JW, I, you know, I'm, t- I'm telling him, we're like retelling this story about when the bucket puke fell on me. And I, I was telling him and whoever else was there, like how pissed I was at the time. And I was just screaming. I was, I was like yelling, like, just whoever knocked it down, just come over here and fight me. And then, like, I'm not even a fighter. Like, I rarely get angry. Anyone who knows me knows that. But this was just so jarring and so disgusting that I was just, I was pissed. I was pissed at anyone. Ruined my new shirt, stank me up. Um, so I'm telling the story again with JW and some of my other friends. And he turns to me and he says, Look, I, I've got, I have something to confess. Uh, that night, I was hanging out at the top of the stairs when you were walking up. And I accidentally knocked the bucket. I bumped into it with my foot, and I knocked it down on you. It was me, and I was dumbfounded. He listened to me tell the story many times. Not, not only that, the night of, he said he was so scared to admit that it was him right after he did it that he just couldn't and wasn't sure if he was ever going to tell me. But I had told the story so many times in the following weeks that he just had to fess up because that in itself was hilarious. <clears throat> and of course, you know, I was a little, I was a little troubled to find out that it was actually him because all, all of the ranting and raving and stinking out the place that I did that night, he, I mean, he was just laughing in the back of his head. He's laughing and he was a little afraid to admit it, but he was just having a great time behind my back knowing that it was him that caused such a weird night for me. Um, so this is this goes out to you. JW, know who you are. Um, I guess I'm glad that that happened in the end, uh, you know, because now we have a little story to, to tell about that night. Otherwise, it may not have been as eventful. Um, and I do apologize to... All my friends, especially my friend whose house it was at, um, for just just staking up the place horribly. Um, so that is the end. Again, totally from memory, totally, um, uh, we'll call it pseudo-fiction. But this concludes my night of eating a sandwich, hanging with Bob, and losing a very nice shirt to a bucket of throw-up.